man was murdered overnight on Chicago's south side. Police say it happened execution style in the Gresham neighborhood. Well, it was a violent night in Chicago. Nine people were shot in just five hours. One person died. 124 people men. have been killed so far this year, one per day. About the number of Americans killed during the same period in Iraq and Afghanistan. There are three bullet holes in his home, fired by the drug by shooter. Gregory Robinson is the 28th Chicago Public School student killed this school year. He died last Friday, shot in the back as he tried to shield two young children. Sadly, on the other side of the Times, members of Ceasefire were also at today's memorial service, hoping to stop any thoughts of retaliation for Greg's murder. 12, 13 year olds are walking around with bulletproof vests on up under their clothes. Let's close up. Everybody that's in the meeting, this is serious now, okay? We're in a crisis mode, and we need people to step up at this table and go over and beyond. Guys are getting killed for just anything. Have there been any conflicts mediated on the front end from last week to, to this week? Two guys was arguing. One guy threatened to blow the other guy's wig back. I got him to calm down, tell him he didn't shoot you. He was just talking. We stopped that one on the front end. I have the dirty dozen at the table. We've always had outreach workers, but the violence was not necessarily going down at that point. So in the year 2004, we began a new concept called the violence interrupters. Most of the violence interrupters come from the hierarchy in some of these gangs. Because can't know anybody come in and tell a guy to put his gun down. They kept calling me, and they shooting us, what you want me to do? Just ask me what you want me to do. The violence interrupters had one goal in mind, to stop killings. They're not trying to dismantle gangs. What they're trying to do is save a life. I might get shot. Nobody's been changed. Nobody's come through shoes. You mean it for life. What happened? You actually got an incident right here before. By the time we got out there, the fight had just ended. The cops pulled up and pulled off. Y'all missed that shit. The cops pulled up and they left. They're scared. They're scared of the community. One group of guys said the young man threatened that he had a gun and that he was going to kill him. So he started fighting and ended up getting his teeth knocked out. Come on. He needs to go to the doctor. So you want to go to the emergency room? You gotta, come on, let's take it. Come on. And Kobe got him off location. I asked Kobe to take him to the hospital. Come on. Hey, look. I'm the pop. Watch this. The block got quiet, and I'm looking down the street. And here comes the sisters of the guy that got his tooth knocked out. They came to defend their brother's honor with a butcher knife. The sister calls one of the guys a bitch ass, punk ass. The little four and five year old baby was doing the same thing. I'm gonna knock your bitch ass out. Run up, kid. 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 Why you just talking to me? You gonna come and help? You gonna beat me? You gotta look at me. Look at her like you look at me. You ain't gonna beat me. I'm not gonna steal. What the fuck? Look at my brother. 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 Look at my brother
the story about sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you. Words that get you killed. And all of a sudden, the sister ran up with a piece of concrete. One of the girls was about to stab one of the guys. Her cousin picked up the butcher knife. D was in the heat of the moment that adrenaline was still going and I'm gonna fuck them up. I'm gonna get them back. I picked up D and I said, you need to get off the block for a minute. He was out of line, he was out of pocket, he was very disrespectful. And I know how many people I got out here that's willing to take care of the business. We gonna do this and that and all this and that. Uh -huh. His family kept calling him, you know, what's taking you so long so we can come back over there and set that block off? Because if his family would have came to get him, maybe it would have been a death behind it. I know you got some damn food for family. Yeah. You know about what I'm you. And, and about they ready you. over here. And because yeah. I know you just come home. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no problem in going back. I saw yeah. that you wasn't, you know, you was walking away exactly. to defend you or your family. Right. But and I really, man, mm -hmm. yeah. man, I thank you. I mean, for real. For, sure. for real. That's I, what gangsta is about I, I, right I, there. I yeah, definitely don't right. want to go. You wasn't that gangster? I took him over to his cousin's house. We were talking about how he got hit and he tumbled over. Like a cartoon character. Woo! So if you get them to laugh at themselves, give them a moment to pause, to think about really how crazy and funny that it was. Find that soft spot of that person. Not weak but soft spot, and you just ride on that. Amina Matthews has a violence interrupter. She's a golden girl, and she gets in where a lot of guys can't get in. She knows how to talk to these high-risk young men, and a lot of guys I know that uh, have a lot of murder in their background, they respect her. So he I The life that I live, being in shootouts, looking at the devil face to face, and I look at my, my sisters and my brothers today, you know, that was once me. But her father was Jeff Ford, one of the biggest gang leaders in the history of Chicago outside of Al Capone. Ford is serving a life sentence for allegedly conspiring with the Libyans to commit acts of terrorism here in the United States. I understand the fact that we got police in here. Isn't it not going to be any killing without killing? Jeff Ford stood up like against that. the police. He was definitely a feared and very revered man in his community. But she never lived off that name. Amina made her own name on the streets. Growing up, it wasn't his influence that influenced me to do anything. You know, my dad was not there. When I was conceived, he was 16 years old. So when I got older, I was in a mob with a bunch of guys, and I was like the only female that was the lieutenant that took care of the business. It was drug selling, hustling. You know, one crew was on the pimping tip. One crew was on the stick-up tip. Drugs, guns, party, fun, I, that was it. My dad wasn't around, and when he got wind of that, I was a part of that team, he was kind of hurt. But he couldn't be too hurt, because look at what precedent that he started. Young man got shot 22 times. 13 years old. That's sad. This is a state of emergency. This is what the war zone looks like. We're sick and tired of our babies yes, sir. Yes, sir. being killed. This man here lost a son. Yes, sir. We can't be quiet no more. My son has been killed right here. We standing here with cameras right here with my son been slayed at. Come on now. I don't think that's right. 
We could do this somewhere else. I have to sit there and try to say something to you guys. Who does that? You say that there's still a code of silence going on in the neighborhood that people aren't coming forward. I can't walk around and go to people's houses and say, who killed my son? I'm not a police officer and I'm not a doctor. You know, I don't know how many times my son, they tell me 22, I don't know how many times my son's been shot. See, somebody in the background saying 22. You a doctor, baby? I'm just auntie. Okay, that's what the doctor I put you there. Right. That's my that's son, baby. You didn't make him. You his auntie. Five. We're going to move this on. What you mean? You, what you don't get? What? Words of encouragement to the family. Let me just say this, we just had another homicide. Wow. Guess now why we're marching. Mm -hmm. Another homicide. It's a war zone. It's a war zone and an epidemic. People, we must come together. He was sticking people up. The guys caught him in a walkway. Chains him. You know we got some guys over on the next block. Some memoros over there. It ain't gonna be no retaliation from it. Mm. It's just so crazy, man, because it's like every time you come outside, somebody getting killed. I don't know what this world coming to. We got to be out here, man, before things happen. All my life, I knew right for wrong. I knew if I do this, I'd get in trouble. But, you know, at the time, I just didn't care, though. I always wanted to be like my dad. You know, he is my role model because he used to always dress slick, wear big hats and suits and, you know, all that. And I just, you know, wanted to be like him. I was 11 years old when my father got killed. He got beat with some baseball bats. And that just messed me up. I used to be out there in the streets all through the night. I used to be in jails, fighting, kicking off rides, and doing all crazy stuff. Just game banging. Oh, what up, boy? Man, come on, let me, man. What's up? We called him Kobe Williams. Uh, he's a younger interrupter, which is a good thing. But once he came on board to cease fire, he began to really turn the heat on. Kobe knows how to get in. He talks the language, and he knows what to say when to say it. Um, Crazy, man. You two guys, man, y'all been around here on a lot of bullshit, yeah. both of y'all. Robbing people, breaking the windows, all kinds of stuff. Man, whenever I got to do what I got to do, I got to do what I got to do, you know? Don't get it all twisted. Once upon a time, this man was out here, too, doing the same thing we did and did. Kobe yeah. has big time credibility with the gang members out there. Why did we go away from people in front of us? Breaking out, look at them. <laughs> A friend of mine called me, very concerned about her two kids. The streets is taking a toll. They stay in the same house, and they be at each other because both of them are in two different cliques. Yes. Threatening to kill one another, shooting at each other is just crazy. I can't keep coming off the road, you know, because I work for Amtrak, and not knowing if somebody's going to kick the door in because of this gang's violence. I just packed up and left, yes. So I left the apartment in my name so they don't be homeless. So this my little honeycomb hat out. Oh, this your honeycomb They don't know where I live either. Your kids don't? Nope. Your youngest son's still locked up, right? Yep. He don't get out till 2016 mm -hmm. for attempt murder. And he was 17 when they got him. One thing, you still have all three of your kids. Yes, Some I thank people... God for that. People say I'm crazy because I say if I lose one of my sons, I don't want no funeral. I don't want nobody to come, you know, give me condolences. Because I want to remember them. The last decent time I seen them. And they say that's mean to me, but that's how I feel. So just stay strong and keep your head up. I'm going to try to reach out to them myself. Well, I wish you luck in finding them. Yeah, just trying to see what I could do. Because I know if they have a strong person that's lived that life, I think they could be saved. Because I, I just can't do it anymore. Right. 
violence is like the great infectious diseases of all history. I mean, we used to look at people with plague, leprosy, um, TB, as bad and evil people. And something needs to be done about them, and they were put in dungeons. What perpetuates violence can be as invisible today as the microorganisms of the past were. I had been overseas for about 10 years at World Health and working on infectious diseases. Coming back to the US, the violence is unavoidable. But I saw it as behavior, not as bad people. You can judge it, but it's not what we do in science. I never had no, none against food and them, nothing. When I came out, like I said, they shot on my car. For the young people in these neighborhoods, they see violence as their disease. What they expect to die of is this. Don't tell me you're going to squash something, then go back and do something else. Exactly. But then you done made me look like an ass. Right. And if that's what you want to do, then you put on big boy shoes, then you play big boy games. Violence is a two-step process. The first thought is, I have a grievance. He looked at my girl, he called me a name, he disrespected me, he owes me money. He's a Sunni, he's a Palestinian, he's an Israeli. The second thought is that grievance justifies violence. At the end of the day, man, nobody don't win, man. Our work is about thought too. I mean, and your family hurt behind that shit. That's why I say ain't no point no thing. Yours wrong, yours wrong, fuck all that. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker just trying to move on, man. So the interrupters are all like the TB disease control workers' role is to do this initial interruption of transmission. Five steps to effective gang mediation. A lot of times you're going to get into them situations that you're going to have to weigh it out and you're going to have to know when to step it off. Their experience around difficult situations did not begin with their work with us. So it's all a matter of selecting the right people and training them and supervising them and supporting them told the officers that you ain't got nothing to say. You're going to deal with it yourself. Right. You got to drown yourself with the people and immerse yourself in the bullshit. You have to talk as if, man, I understand, man. I've been there. I know how it is to hurt a motherfucker. I'm not no punk or nothing. Yeah. The only thing that came to my mind was retaliate. They got to know they did the wrong person. Yeah. I hear you, Jack. You know, you 100% right. And I'm with you, man. If you're going to take care of your business, take care of your business. But check this out. If I know you want to shoot the motherfucker, the police know already, your friends know, and somebody going to tell on your ass. And make sure you talk to the individual that did this to me. Man. You let them know that you going to keep this here peace. Yeah. You doing this. Yeah. Once you, you make sense out of the madness, then you start talking about the scientific theory. You start talking about the change of the behavior. You, then you can give them a history lesson. You know, your daddy was violent, your granddaddy was fucked up, he was violent. Now, now your brothers are fucked up because you misled them. It's time to save yourself, brother. Save yourself. I'm not preaching to you, just save yourself. Does this make sense, brother? Oh, man, you know what? You got a point. Right, brother, just give me time to work it, all right? Down. All right. You know, I really understand why it's not easy for people to back down for one reason. All right, man. Because you've been taught all your life in the community where I grew up in, you know, like, you know, you got to stand up no matter what happens, death before dishonor. When I was 14 years old, uh, this, this guy beat me down in the streets, and my uh, stepfather took his life right in front of me, and I felt good about it, really. And I was always a shaky criminal. I used to sell fake uh, hash to the sailors down on Michigan Avenue. I used to steal smoke detectors. They called them the smoke detector bandits. I was playing on women a lot. You know, women would help me. I had a lot of girlfriends that would give me money because I had a big old afro back then. First time I worked for Ceasefire in 1999, I told Gary I had a bachelor's degree at that time. <laughs> and Gary asked me, he said, where's your bachelor's degree at? I said, look, man, hey, I was just trying to get in. <laughs> I went back to school. I got my bachelor's degree with my master's degree. I began to understand that we've been taught violence. It's violence is learned behavior. Say, hear me clearly, young brothers. I don't mention gang names when I do my mediations, all right? At this transitional home for teenage parolees, the residents were in conflict with one another, and they were pulling in gang members from throughout the area. It was about to blow up in a major way. 
The problem that we have right now is about some money that led to a fight, right? How much money was it? Twenty-five dollars. It was about five dollars. Everybody. Dude said instead of giving him five dollars, give him fifteen. No, it don't work like that. You ain't gonna get no more than what you want. He said I'm not paying you. Right. And five minutes later on, they came up here. It took me as a woman to stand in the middle of the street with fifteen guys that I knew no, knew nothing of, right. and to have come out my pocket and pay fifteen dollars to keep peace. No respect for where you live at. I think this could turn into gunplay. Yeah, I think so because it's gonna escalate, it's gonna keep going and going. If we gotta live here, man, I don't wanna bring these streets over here, man. I ain't trying to go back to that life. I'm one man, I can't fight all of them. What you think I'm gonna do? Heck yeah, I'm gonna go get me a thumper. Like this brother just said, anytime 15 guys mob up on you, uh, the first thing that comes across your mind, I need to be strapped to deal with that. If you gotta live here and coexist with each other, someone has to be big enough to take the higher road. It's gonna go through one and out the other. Look, you know, the most important thing, pay attention to what they're saying. Because at this site where you live at, if you cause any kind of trouble, 5 will be called. I'm hearing what they're telling me in there, right? And to me, it's like starting off with a $5 bag a week. It's beyond that. It's beyond that. But wait a minute. I get fed up. No, 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 no. You got to play it like a big man. I got to play it like a big girl. When I get angry, I can bring some noise if I want to. I go lay it down. I have to. Don't make me feel like a punk. It make me feel like, you know what? Let's fight my own ego. I swear to God, I wish I had somebody to holler at me like I'm right here hollering at you. I would have not had the feeling on my record. You understand what I'm saying? What we gonna do? We gonna fight about another $5 bag of weed? It ain't worth it. They feed off her energy, too. So what you gonna do, son? Tell me, and I'm going to hold you to it. Make myself better. You too. Little Mina. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to let it go, we can let it go. Bye, I'm going to see some love. love Inglewood, but it's hard not, man. You know, it's all saying Inglewood is all good. It's where I learned all my life's lessons. Ah, lock my keys in the car! Ooh, I don't even know how to do that. I got a screwdriver in the white. Uh, a screwdriver? Y'all gonna tear my car? What kind of lock she got? Whatever. Ceasefire back in the hood. Well, who scratched your face? You was out here thumping? I fight every day. You fight every day? You too handsome to be doing all of that. Most of our mediations come through the community here. They'll tell us that it's some tension in the air and need us to come in and help out. Quit playing or I bust your nose. I'm going to pass these out to everybody and their mama. Just pass them out to everybody and their mama. But I just didn't want to have to see your drawers in the process of passing them out. Did I have to? No. Well, why am I still seeing them? But I thought you had got shot in your shoulder, but it was in your leg. It was your gas who made each other in the cars. So I jumped, because I was trying to save my cousin. I had a big old hole in my leg, like this big. What's your grades like? A's, B's, and C's. A's, B's, and C's. And one day. What you want? What's the D in? Huh? You better not be in PE, or I'm going to hit you in your throat. <laughs> <laughs> I like those, too. Well, you took them for your sisters. No, I didn't. I bought these. <laughs> you think you hot, don't you? When I was growing up in Inglewood, we still looked out for one another. To me, it's like there's still some hope left. You think you hot. No, no killing. Cease fire. I've been trying to get up with Toya two kids, man, because both of them are rival cliques. It was easy to get up with Bud. Your mama asked me to try to reach out, mm -hmm. try to sit down and work with you, your brother, try to talk with you, and all that too, though. It's a like bloodline thicker than water. And like, right. and when, within your bloodline, if it's an opposition, like a different game, that's hard to deal with too. Right. And like, I get into it with him a lot, though. Is there any way we could meet him and probably talk with both of y'all at the same time? Yeah. So okay, man, just, man. Uh, hit me tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna get up with you, man. All right, thanks a lot. No time. Okay. Appreciate it. All right.
He do look like a rough rider, don't he? Even took me a minute to get up with the older brother, Kendall. What's up, boy? What's up? How you doing, man? Chilling out. I might as well just be straight up on it. And your mama, she concerned about you and Bud. We fight every day. It's either I knock him out, he knock me out. I mean, like, uh, we up in pistols on each other over little shit. And y'all live like, on the same roof. That mean, if y'all up in guns on each other, that mean if he go to sleep and you go to sleep, but y'all y'all got sleep with one that open. Y'all can't even trust each other. Like, last year, my best friend got killed. I could get shot tomorrow. I know it's gonna hurt my mom more than anybody, you know? She say she just moves away because she can't take it no more. Yeah, I can't get along with my mom. Cause she, you are just like your daddy and shit, woo woo. I, mom, I ain't trying to hear that, I'm, I'm gone. I'm outside, you know? My father, he been locked up since I was three years old. He get out a little bit after I turn 18. My life would be totally different if my father was here. You know, he was in my life, just being involved, checking up on me every day and, how you doing, son? What's going on? I love you, son. Right. You know, I can count on one hand how many times I told my mama I love her. So I'm going to um, talk with Bud and Toya, man, and see, man, we can try to get together, man, just sit down and talk, man. I ain't trying to point no finger who's wrong and all that. Let's just correct this. Let's just be a family and be happy. So you up with that? Yeah, I'm with it. First and foremost, I want to thank the young brothers from coming from Calumet City. But why don't you stand up in the back if you don't mind. What happened last week, there was a big conflict with two different groups. We got a chance to really work with them young brothers and a sister. When I met that sister, she made it clear to me. She said, I'm a sister, brother. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to call you. <laughs> when I call your phone, I expect you to answer. Like, yeah, Mina. <laughs> I'm like, hello? <laughs> We've been keeping in contact. Capricia is a very loving young lady that had not had a chance to have a childhood. Substance abuse plays a, a huge part of the toxicness that she was raised around. I was worried. I know you wanted to go see your mother. Your mama don't want you to see her. Did she use it? Do you want to love? Or do you think if you see her, you get mad? I get mad. All right, so we're just going to have to keep it moving. You got to get ready to get do you. Be a big girl. You want to go skating this weekend? You do? Okay, I'm gonna send a car for you this weekend because it's my eight year old's birthday. She hot ass mess. If I got time, I'll come and get you myself. All right, baby. <laughs> Today we're celebrating my daughter's birthday. We're really sad because Capricia was supposed to come skating with us. May Allah bless you. So then I got the full scoop. She wanted to get back in touch with her mom and that caused her to feel. And she acted out on some old behavior. She got high. She violated her parole. So she's in the county jail. I need you guys to say please and thank you. Right, Maddie? OK, right, right, right. Where you find these strangers at? These your people, man. Where y'all find him man? Today, I finally reached Toya and her two kids, and we agreed to all sit down together and work things out. This morning, Toya was steaming hot. She went by. The apartment, she left her kids. She saw Kendall friend in there bagging up some drugs. She went back and changed the locks. Shit, time's hard. You got to have a job out here, man. Yeah, man. We'll hustle one or the other. Hustle gonna end you up one or two places. It really don't matter right now. Well, if it don't matter, why speak on it? I guess that's the same in your life. You're not gonna make no progress. You just gotta humble yourself. You, you thinking like you want a handout. 
No one's gonna give you anything. You talking to Pim or me? I'm, ta I'm talking to General now. If you're oh. listening, then I'm talking to you too. I'm really not listening to what? shit you're saying. That's you why really you're in the predicament you is now. I don't have time for the shit. Well, what you been I through ain't that so hard? Nobody has what you straight. been through that so hard? So what the fuck is you saying, bitch? You ain't no Jake. boss of me, boy. Right. Come on, man. Your crowd or who you be around. around, that don't make you no motherfucking man, nigga. Push gonna sell whatever I say gonna go. If I want, if I that's want a motherfucker out there, it. ain't nobody gonna be out there, nigga. Now what? You look now at what it. you gonna that's say? That's how you look at it. Y'all shoot at that crowd, then it's on. And I'm right there. Then it's on. Is you gonna rock with your guy? But hey, 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 Bud and Kenneth. Kenneth and Bud, but I just want to hear. I just want to hear. On our way down there, I'm like, damn, did I make a mistake? You know what I'm saying? I don't want them to get to fighting under my watch. I'm saying one thing, y'all missing, man. Y'all is blood brothers, man. Y'all ain't no bad kids. Both of y'all finished school. Both of y'all ain't been to no motherfucking penitentiary. That's good, man. I just hate how my my own people just think like, yeah, Kenneth. The type of crowd he Boy, be around and all this and all that. Boy, if I was the parent that I was, you wouldn't have made through school. I make sure you had what you that. needed. Hey, to hey, get but there. Kenneth, I'm gonna tell you this though. She won't see shit happen to y'all, man. He can't say when he need or he need a bond. I'm not there. I always bond him out of jail for stuff that I don't even believe in. I don't need no, no, no other motherfucker. I never served for another man yes, or none of that have. shit. I always been yes, on my you own have. too. Yes, you Always have. been on my own yes, too. If I, if I, if I had got something from another motherfucker, Kobe, I took it. That's what you wanna believe. Plain and simple. Cause but I feel the motherfucker to old. It. Go to work. You don't yeah, have to I'm take right here on no Roosevelt and Ashley. Right here. Ain't no favoritism. A I ain't come to the office. It's heated child. right now. A parent okay. see when the person is led a certain way. All right. If the clique you are in, and I ain't putting you on the spot, but if they came at your brother, would you stop them? Yeah. You would. Okay. The clique you in, if they came at your brother, would you stop them? Of course. And my thing to you, when it come down to the street game, the only choices, man, is jails, deaths, and institutions. Do you feel you can be in a cell for 23 hours a day, a six by nine cell? No, no man could be in that place for, tw for huh? that long. But what'll happen when you're on the streets, though, little brother, you run into a situation out there with your brother's associates, you mad at your mama, you mad at your brother, you're not thinking right, you hound some reefer, bam, you shoot some motherfucking body, right? I'm not, you're not that guy, but it happens. Hear me, hear me clearly, hear me clearly. 60% of the guys in the penitentiary were not them kind of guys. They were probably sitting in the same seats like you sitting there and never thought it would happen to them. I bet you. I love my brother to death. He just don't understand, like, and it's not really a problem with him. It's really a problem with, like, my mother and my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they really do take sides, man. I don't got no problems with my brother. I love my mama to death, but she just don't listen or try to just... Just try to relate a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And all the shit that she done while I'm growing up, you ain't always been peaches and cream in your I life. I never either. said Mama I was, talk. but at the same time, you don't have to go down that road and I'm be really the not. Peach. I'm really not. I'm really not. You gonna have issues with your mother. Every damn kid in the United States, black or white, got issues with their parents, man. This ain't nothing new. Which one of you brothers can cook? Neither one. I, could, I know how to cook something, anything. You can cook your mother a meal one day, man. Y'all need to sit down with your mother. <laughs> you hear me? I know it's kind of tough because you haven't done it, but you need to sit down with your mother, man. Have a family day. My oldest child, she don't right. even know. I know how to get down. See? Though. You know, that's kind of that's kind of <laughs> odd to me. It's not coming to me right. It's just not coming to me right right now. That's no, right. right. Man, you know what I love to see, though, for right, real, man? Right. I love to see y'all two embrace each other, man. You and your brother, man. For real. I'm gonna let Kobe handle that one there. I'd love to see y'all embrace each other, man. And your mother. And your, and your mama, yeah, yeah man. Your mom, that's what's happening right there, bro. You know, can you handle that, little brother? Huh? I ain't, I ain't gonna force you to do it, you know that. I ain't gonna force you, brother, but uh. You should embrace your mama, your brother. I know you all not ready to. Embrace. I was sick but having that shit. It's your mama, man. I wouldn't care what, man. You should still always hug your mama, let her know you love her, man. I know my mama love me. I love my mama. I know she'll do anything for me. Hello. But when my dad got killed, things really just went downhill. My mother done come up, started using drugs. After my father died, she couldn't deal with it. 
I'm like, that shit took a toll on me. I'm finna drink me a cocktail today. I ain't drinking no cocktail. I don't want you to keep drinking. That's why God is my witness. I'm 38 years old right now, and I said I wasn't gonna never use drugs. I wasn't gonna never drink. I really stopped following my daddy's footsteps, though. Selling drugs, hustling, going back and forth to jail. I what know they thought I was coming. coming. Uh-huh. Coming up, I was more close to my grandparents. And my grandmother, from day one, stayed on me. Look at Granny. Happy birthday to me. I call him Cardi, but his name is Ricardo. I love all my grandkids. But Cardi was one I guess I did do more for and took under my wing. When I went to jail, my grandmother bought me out. I was like, Grandma, I knew you was going to get me out anyway. I'm your baby. <laughs> and she said, go back and see. I went back. Grandma, I didn't do nothing of that. I probably have broke her heart a lot of times doing things I shouldn't have been doing. But she always remind me of the good in me. saved his life. Because Carter had been shot at, probably was shooting at people. So something turned him around. I ain't gonna say through me and his granddaddy, but he loved him. Hey, my granny. Love you. Love you, granny. Bill, if you know we can handle it. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end. I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. Now, don't say it. But I always thought that I'd sleep on the beat, because I'll forget him and walk away. Medea's always shot from both hips. I was with Medea from birth to nine, and from nine to about 15, I went and I did stay with. Um, Your biological my biological mother. mother. Now, we are talking about my family because I'm the mother of a biological mother. We need to honor and respect our children. We can't just throw them out there and throw them away. Because of the lifestyle that my mother lived, I went through a real rough journey. Being abused physically, emotionally, sexually, from the age of nine to the age of 15. So I just went back to Medea. My grandmother lived in an apartment with four of us, and it was roach infested. You know, once I started learning the game, my goal was to get Medea up out of there. Medea was the type of woman that, that type of money, don't bring that shit in my house but I got caught up. I got caught up in that one more thousand, one more run, one more big hit. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha I was introduced to Islam through my father. It was always something inside of me that was constantly saying that I have to do better. I wasn't afraid. I just knew that I had to come on with it. Allah sent me confirmation through someone else. She knew what she wanted. That's what led her here. And so we believe that you know, it was a heavenly marriage. Allah, let your blessings and your peace be upon your servant and your message. My family keeps me very, very grounded. Companions. It is no accident that we are here. All souls are here. He took your phone. No, it took your phone. <laughs> At the end of the day, I have to come in, cook dinner, help with homework, 
Test some ass out the frame if I have to. Show him some salam, love. Don't do it no more. Right. Bust your jaw. <laughs> a family is really my real job. Out there in the community is a piece of cake for me. My husband worries about me more than anyone else. There are times that I can't be there physically with her, uh, but I know that she is fearless and she will lay it on the line and uh, she'll go up against a lion. Oh. She will just stand up for anyone because of experiences she's had growing up where someone didn't stand up for her. Our mosque is holding a prayer visual for a kid shot sitting in front of his home just listening to the radio. Corey definitely wasn't in a gang, and he was loved by his block. When rage sets in, when ego sets in, when a Hennessy sets in. Hey, I'm gonna walk down here to where Corey's friends are. You stay right here. These young guys say, let's go get who we think did it. I'm hearing 20 different things why that brother got changed. And all of it is stupid. All of it is stupid. Two o'clock in the afternoon when these babies coming home from school, y'all shoot. For real. This is unacceptable for me to be holding this boy, this young man's obituary. Schools, churches, your mama's house, your cars, those are safe zones. And when I was about your age, I was making some real stupid decisions and some stupid calls that was causing me, my life, blood on my hands and my head. Stop. Who does this baby belong to? Who does this little shorty belong to? He just hanging around y'all? No, he just hang, this little mo, this little mo, he just hanging around y'all, right? So he see everything that you all do, right? So if this brother right here catch a case and do a hundred years, whose fault is it? It's his fault? <laughs> Teach him righteous. Y'all got it? Yes. Y'all got it? Yes. You got it? Yes. All right. I'm looking to you. Give me my number. Give me a call, all right? All right. That's us. I'm running it. Oh, well. All right. All right. brother on the left side and my little cousin on the right side, Tyrone Williams and Percy Davis, Jr. trying to sign Michael Alter. I held him to his last breath. I didn't want to let him go. I've lost at least 20 guys. There's no answer to it. You know, you're one of your guys that killed Pucky. I'm gonna kill that nigga and make his family suffer. I don't want no shrine, beer bottles, drinks. 
niggas crying, smoking weed, pictures and shit, t-shirts. I don't want none of that shit. I don't want to die looking stupid as hell. Oh, fuck that. Youth violence in Chicago has gotten world attention. 16-year-old honor student Darian Albert was attacked as he walked home from school. A senseless killing, this time was caught on videotape, has put Chicago's deadly epidemic in the spotlight. Now there's debate on a national level, which all basically started with that viral video that came out from the cell phone of the clash between the two gangs outside Fenger High School that killed Darian Albert right in the middle. See this young man here? You see him taking this board from this young man. And this is the young man that you actually gonna see hit the board in the back of the head. Look for the guy in the red coat, watch him. Now see, he took it, and then watch him. That's a two by four, wasn't it? Yeah. They still hit me. Amina is going to assist us with the family because we got to get them to the site where they're going to do the memorial because this is what the family wants, okay? Which way does that go? It goes that way, that arrow? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go that way. I seen the video and I said, oh man, I hope his mother does not see this. There's a lot of people up there for your brother, you know that, right? There's a lot of people, okay? Stay in that circle. We got security on both sides of you. you Anjanette kind of needed help getting want. him a funeral. She needed help trying to make sense of what just happened to her son. I got resources for Anjanette to put Darion in a mausoleum next to her mother. Only the family, nobody else. Amina is very, very important to us. Everything I went through, she was right there with me. We're praying for this family. Amen. We're praying that God will heal their hurts. Yes. And I'm That's praying it. for all of you, my brothers and my sisters. Yes. This is a problem in our community. Right. It's a problem yes. in our city. Yes. It's a problem in our nation. Once the media is gone, back to wherever they came from, we have to step up to the plate and make something happen over there. Year after year, who are not doing anything about this problem. I'm talking about the police department. I'm talking about all of those who are doing nothing. The person that was videotaping the goddamn beating was saying, zoom in, zoom in, put that nigga to sleep. That's what you heard the people saying in the background. So that goes to show you the mindset. Because I know Amina, she spent a lot of time with the family still. They're trying to fix his face so they can have an open casket. I heard some of the interviews from the young brothers. They say they don't know why the hell they fight, they just hate each other. So somebody tell me what they fighting for then. We grew up gang banging. Right, right. It don't make a difference what we fighting for. You ain't with me, you against me. And that's just how it's always been, Tio. The guys from Argyle Gardens, they were attending uh, Carver School, which was turned into a military school. A lot of guys didn't want to go to a military school, so they transferred the guys to Finger. So now you got these guys coming from a whole nother neighborhood. When they laid there and closed down Carver High School, and start letting these guys get to school any kind of way they can, riding on the bus, walking, or what have you, you left it to them to lay here and defend themselves. And the Ville is fighting our girl guys. have been doing that since the 60s, man. We up against history. Yeah, we got to respect history, but it shouldn't play a big factor in this table. Man, we got over 500 years of prison time at this table. That's a lot of fucking wisdom. How the hell are we gonna let these kids school us that we were schooling them? We wanna try to work this conflict out. Cause right now they just had another big fight up at Finger while we talking. The beat goes on. That's that brother right there, man. They're, they're putting him in the, that's the body. 
man. This young brother that we just finished doing some mediating with, close friend, just got killed. The possibility of retaliation at that moment was very, very likely. That cop was just looking at me all crazy, too, like she got a fucking problem. They just shot right now on 30th and Kedwell again. 30th and Kedwell? Right Get now. the fuck out of here. Again, yeah. right now? Right now, a couple minutes ago. Police are going to be harassing a lot of guys over here, whether they're affiliated or not. I think the police should enforce the laws, but I think it's the way they, they go about it. There's a reason why people in the community don't really like talking to the police. They see other guys, they see their, their nephew, they see their brother, they see their sisters, you know, being harassed. Just because of the high presence of police right now, that doesn't mean nothing for these guys, man. Within 30 hours, there was about seven shootings. Eddie always presents himself as a preppy, school-going, collegiate type of guy. I said, look, man, there ain't nothing shaking, man. They ain't trying to hear it. And when you talk to him about his street pass, oh, no, we don't want to go there, man. <laughs> we don't want to go there. But at the same time, he came from the lifestyle with the Latino gangs, and he wasn't no low-level member. He was right there with the leader. They called him Bandit because he would end up taking something from you. My nickname? <laughs> well, I was pretty good stealing cars. I was... Give me a screwdriver and this in a minute, and I'm gone with your car. Well, this is a block and middle village that I actually grew up in. I have a lot of memories here. Right hand of God. I had about almost half of this parking lot full of stolen cars at one time. But one day, the, the city, I guess, found all these stolen cars. So there was about maybe seven, eight tow trucks just lined up, taking these cars out. Most of our parents immigrated from Mexico. Worked two jobs. It was we were out here in the street, roaming around. Well, my dad was a hardworking person. He fixed cars, and I would see my dad's hands, and they'd be full of calluses, you know, and and you know, cuts all over his arm and burn marks, you know, from the blow torches. From day one, I told myself I am never gonna be fixing cars. It wasn't me. I didn't feel it. It lit up in me when I saw some, some things in the neighborhood. And I would see these guys right hanging out, a lot older than I was. They had the nice cars, had the girls, were flashing their colors. What it was is they had a pride of who they really were. They had an identity, and they were proud of that identity. Half of my life, I was in prison. That's why I do what I do now. To me, it's a personal thing. How you been feeling? You been moving around a little more now or what? Yes. Before I couldn't even walk. I'm dressing, this is what I got clean. You know, because I got to take a dump right here in the bag. How much of an impact are we making? If we stop one shooting tonight, we did good. Where the bullet went through. But how do we stop maybe the same person from shooting somebody the next day? Get long, man. Has anybody been here to visit? A couple of my friends. They've been cool or they've been like, oh, man, fuck that. There we are. There we are. Some hype shit. I know how it is. Am I really helping? Some people, I can't. It's even as much as I want to, they don't want the help. The needless and brutal violence that continues to take our children from us is an outrage. Youth violence is not a Chicago problem. It is something that affects communities big and small, and people of all races and all colors. It is an American problem. I promise to work as long as necessary to rid our country of this plague. Mr. Yeah, Secretary man. Duncan, I've heard you say those things many times. What's different now? What's different that it takes capturing Darian Albert's death on video to wake the country? We were dealing with children being shot every single day. I never saw a crowd like this, ever. And all the professionals working in this, this field they knew about the hostilities coming out of the Agile Gardens projects and the young men around Finger, so there was no way in the world that should have really occurred, to be real with you. I talked to the mayor's office today. We're going to bring together the guys out in the conflict, and they've agreed to meet with us, and we're going to process with them. We have a five-hour agenda. I think we can get all the brothers we need. Correct me if I'm wrong. And they willing to come sit down here and talk with us, and, you know, people need to talk to them, come to see what's on their mind, the kids' mind. You just got kicked out of Finger, man. You want to go back to Finger? Yeah, you know I do. 
Why well, you feel about the people coming for I get guards out there? I used to get into it with them a lot though, but that's what it is though, man. Either fighting or shooting. That's how you gotta solve y'all pro these problems nowadays. Cause if you don't do it, they gonna try to do it to you. If you don't so go hard, it's your life. Up. Me and my wife was looking for a house. I didn't want the kids to grow up and really experience the things I've experienced all my life. We way out here, man. Way out yonder, man. Instead of gun violence, we probably have to worry about rabbits and deer. And I'm OK with that. Man, my wife came from the street. She used to be around rough wilders, people who live the same lifestyle I live. I end up getting pregnant at about 16 and, and did a 360, so. I met my wife in 2002, and she already had three kids. It wasn't love at first sight. Probably not even love at second sight. He's very nerdy, very, very nerdy person. Man, my wife a mess, but like most wives, no. <laughs> no, but I love my wife. Oh, that's short. We at the third. Oh, oh yeah. I see Kobe as a dad, he's really good. He's there for every football game. My kids really enjoy him, especially my daughter. That's that's her everything, her Kobe. Ooh. What really made me start thinking more about doing the right thing, I started thinking about my son. I remember I was in jail and they brought me out with handcuffs until the judge called us and uh, my son, he ran up to me and hugged and kissed me and grabbed me and started crying. So instantly, I got so emotional and like, I think tears was coming, you know what I'm saying? And like, Dad, Dad, I love you, and I love you. As I'm going back to the back, my son just like broke down in front of everybody, just crying. I want my daddy, I want my daddy. I started thinking more about him. I want to change my life because I want to be there for him. It was so much that they had to do to get you released. Yeah, to get me released. Capricia had to stay in the jail for almost a month. I was the first call on her way home, and that experience was just such an eye-opener for her. She said she didn't want to do it again. And my mom had just went to court, and they time about taking her last four kids. She's been in over 15 different homes. She's raised herself and her sisters and brothers while her mom was out doing whatever her mom was doing. The money that I get, I'll go buy my drugs and start selling drugs out on the block just to just to make money for my sisters and brothers and to have what they wanted. I blame myself for my sister not being DCFS. I blame myself for a lot of stuff that I know that it wasn't my fault. Like, what's your goal? To get my high school diploma, go to college, be a pediatrician, and like take care of like and then like my free time, take care of my go get my sister now. And her saying what her goals and dreams are. Who am I to say, you can't do that? Look at your record. Look at Amina's record. Being a violence interrupter, nothing surprises me. But being a mother and seeing this 18-year-old never riding on a carousel kind of blew my mind. <laughs> it's true that it's only so much that I can do. And that's just one Capricia, but it's it's hundreds of thousands of Capricias out there. They got another color. I like green. I know, but but. Let her She got green, leave her green. She got like that lizard green. Now, this is a very expensive manicure. If I see you out there biting your nails, we're going to be on the ground boxing. You better be worried. How's it feel? Nice, right? Yeah. Don't slap him, don't hit him. <laughs> Enjoy it. So where you from? Yeah. Rockford. So what made you move all the way out here? Because I was getting in trouble. I used to fight every day at school. Mm. 
What does that get you? Huh? You know what I mean? What does that get you fighting? Nowhere. Trying to figure that out, huh? Yeah. Because Only for one home. brief second, you become the winner. Mm -hmm. But then, the only thing you win is your own pride, but what, what's that going to take you anywhere in life? Okay. I don't go out and start trouble with everybody. Right. When she bring it, she bring it hard. How'd you find it? We were doing the conflict mediation. Just happened to be the only girl standing outside. So when you came to the house, what you thought? It was different, because, like, you actually was talking to me. You know, you deserve to be happy. You know, you're 19. You deserve, like you said, to be having girly stuff done. That's a whole different hair, man. Mm. Why do you feel like you want to cry, but you don't want to? I don't know. It's okay. I cry. Big girls cry. Angels make prayer in your in your tears when you cry, when you're crying and you're grateful. When you're crying and you're asking God to help you. I'm really so glad I met you, man. You know. Do you guys remember where we left off last week? We're working on our what? Backgrounds. Backgrounds, right? It's about using your brush. Crisscrosses, C's. Last year, I had a hard time going to schools. You know, I was like, hey, look, I work for the violence prevention program, and a lot of them didn't want to acknowledge that there was issues yeah, in their schools. I used a pencil to sketch it out, oh. and I shaded the background. They shaded it. Okay. The Amnesty contacted the Ceasefire. They were actually focusing at the school about violence and how they could help the community and so forth. And I was like, hey, what do you think about the idea of maybe introducing like, art for them to express themselves about violence? Now, this one right here, I kind of really like this one. And when I was in prison, a, painting an was my form of dealing with my issues and my problems and really you discovering myself. You got this angel, he's in hell. And then behind him is like some demons taunting him. Art is kind of a way to hook the kids much what they're thinking about. What's the one thing in your neighborhood that you wish people could focus on more to help out? Spray painting. Spray painting. What about you? The shootings. In my the shootings? <laughs> because my mom's scared that there's going to be a shooting going on me while I'm outside. I would want them to help with the shooting because that really bothers me. Why does it bother you? Because there was this one time when our neighbors got into a fight and I don't know what else happened, but somebody started shooting. And... It really does. And what you're doing right here, being part of this program, that's a great thing. Because it shows that you care and you want to do something about it. And I just wish that these kids, if they ever go through that, it doesn't affect them the same way it affected me. My coping mechanism is keep going, keep going, keep going, keep working. I think I stay busy just to stay out of bullshit and try to forget about some of the things that I've done. When I was 18, a very close friend of mine was paralyzed. I'm feeling this anger, I'm feeling this rage, I'm feeling like they shot one of our guys, we're going back. When I pass through that block, it seems so different. And I try to kind of rewind, and no matter how much I try to remember, they just don't come out. It's hard for me to say the victim's name and, and even the crime. I guess I really try to detach myself from that, like not putting a face. But in reality, the face is there. The face is still there. And 
And I, w I had to be careful as well out here because I knew these guys were packing. And I say by the fire hydrant over there, this dude just kind of came out the cars, shot him pretty much point blank. There was a whole bunch of his friends too that were behind the cars. I was trying to shoot them as well. But it was more like in the defensive side by that time. It was more like just to make sure that they didn't shoot at me. It's funny because this block itself has claimed a lot of lives. This one particular block right here. Cease fire. Shooting, it must stop, it's getting cruel Children going to school and gotta duck shots No more bliss, ignore this, we must not Like Natasha Howlett, she was murdered on the bus stop Two gunshots and she just dropped this daily living I speak the grief for the street so they may be listen And pay attention, help lead us through this mess We infested with death and it leaves us too depressed Like when Darion Albert was beaten to his death Had his mama too upset, crying, speaking to the press Man, it's too much. We began to lose touch. Jesse Jackson took every action and rode the school bus. Do you all think we can establish some type of coexistence or peace up at Finger High School if we all work together? Finger can be a better place if the guards won't come up to the transfer. <laughs> Listen, hear out. Hear, give everybody respect. Hear out. Hear out. I live in Argyle Gardens. They have all this, it's the guards and they animals, it's both ways. You young men and women have to place a value and a vision on your life. Look at yourself 15 years down the road, you will be a full adult. I cannot believe that I'm looking at what has happened to the young people here. You don't have to fight anybody. They always giving these speeches and stuff, everybody don't think the same way. Everybody don't think the same way. It's not about me being an old lady and telling somebody what they should and should not do. It's about you all's life, and you all need to be heard all the way through ends of sentences. So I'm going to throw some scenarios at you, and I want you all to just answer honestly. One of your friends was just beat up at a party over the weekend. You see a couple of kids that your friend identifies as a dude that stole on them. What do you think would happen next? I feel that we don't fight. Because it wasn't, it wasn't no problem when they jumped on my friend over the weekend, so if we see them walking, we don't fight. It ain't like y'all put it, it's not that easy. You might walk away and somebody might put it in your head with a bat or something. Oh, who like to fight? I don't like to fight, but I'll fight if I have to. Yeah, that's how it is, but I'll fight. That's how it goes. Everybody fights. Why you so angry? Why you looking for a fight? Why you looking for a fight? Because it's just the way I was growing up. I was just, I always had to fight. Why you always had to fight? Because I was just, I always had to fight. Because it's just the way I was growing up. I was just, I always had to fight. Always had to fight. Basically. It's hot out there. When I grew up, I used to wake up going to fight somebody. Just fight somebody. And I understand a hellraiser liking a fight. But walking away from a fight ain't always meaning that you punk. It's meaning that you're making a better person, but not to them. When they look at it, they gonna think you a punk and a little bitch and all that. But and as I got older and weighed out my consequences and saw everybody that I was raised with that loved a fight was in the penitentiary yeah. then. Does that mean you the punk still? It's a myth that most of the violence is gang related because a lot of the violence is interpersonal conflict. The guys get into it for the most pettiest reasons out here. So it's all about respect and disrespect, not being be accepted in the overall society. A lot of people feel ostracized. So what they do, they try to dominate their surroundings. I didn't eat this morning. I'm wearing my niece's clothes. I just was violated by my mom's boyfriend. I go to school, and here comes someone that bumps into me and don't say excuse me. You hit zero to rage within 30 seconds, and you act out. Some of these kids, man, they don't care about tomorrow. 
fuck tomorrow. That's what they're gonna tell you. I'm trying to survive today, right now. I'm trying to live right now. I'm trying to make sure I don't get shot. I'm trying to make sure that my boy next to me doesn't get shot. And if he does, guess what? I'm gonna go over there and shoot them too. So this is what violence interrupters do. Uh, focused like a laser on reducing shootings and killings. And then the deeper part of the whole program is changing norms. In, in Chicago, the interrupters have interrupted about 1,400 such events. We average about 40 to 45% drops in shootings and killings in the areas where we put it. Have you had incidents where the police feel that you should have given them information and you didn't, and that you were on the side of the offenders. If we were to do that, we would not be effective. We are trying to keep ceasefire neutral uh, politically, uh, as far as the relationship with law enforcement and the community. I mean, I, I'm confused when you say neutral. How, how are you seen as being a neutral force in that area? Because there's right and there's wrong. It's not about right and wrong on one side. We don't want law enforcement thinking that we are coddling these criminals and we're hiding information so they can continue doing negative behavior. And we don't want the community thinking that we're stool pitches and we're reporting information that they give us to law enforcement. You know, the right and wrong of these conflicts is all point of view. And whether you're gonna take it back one day or five years or 200 years. I mean, everyone has got a grievance. And so we just have to say that no matter what, the additional violence isn't going to be helpful. So we're not in the, the, um, the good and bad game. We're not in that drama. It's just hard, because these guys are still uh, cut from the code of the streets. I've seen the faces of the interrupters when we hear that a seven-year-old girl got shot. The interrupters say, man, something needs to be done. But it's hard for these brothers to make that quantum leap into turning somebody in. The police support ceasefire. But when they first started down here, I got criticized, you know, from everybody, police, people down here on ceasefire staff, you know, you hiring all these, you know, go for tough guys. But how the hell are you going to really stop the violence? We was mediating that situation. A guy recently was released from prison. And he thought the man was talking about him and got out the car and punched the man and his brother. China Joe was known as the gladiator. All vice lords had to fight China Joe to become a vice lord. How you think that makes a young guy feel? Man, China Joe just told me to stand down. He shook his hand, hugged him, and we left it at that. Very good, what's up? Interrupters, you know, our intentions are noble when they're good, but sometimes we don't always go at it the right way. But I'm not in the streets anymore. You can't take law into your own hand. You can't. As an interrupter, that has been one of our greatest challenges. When violence interrupters have to use the threat of violence to actually mediate a conflict, this is where the rubber meets the road at. Because in reality, you cannot mediate conflicts without confrontation. First, save the message. He left me a voicemail. What up, man? I got some important news to talk to you about. I got a call from a guy I met in jail. He said, this guy sent the police in the house somehow he is doing the legal things. Say the police kicked his door in, he locked up his brother, they threw handcuffs on his mother. And he's talking about he knew who had sent the police in this house. He is lucky for him. I ain't your bitch ass yesterday, nigga. Put, man, fuck that pussy ass nigga. What's up, what's up, what's up? My man Flamo make you laugh. But if you fuck with them, you better bring it on. These motherfuckers came here, man, had my motherfucking mama handcuffed, my little brother handcuffed and shit, man. Took my little brother, one got shot. The fucking wheelchair, man. Took him to jail. But still, What's though, man, you got to try to leave that shit alone, man, though, man. I ain't leave the shit alone till I get these motherfuckers. You already know how I get in. I mean, but that fuck shit ain't gonna that. make no... Boy, it's gonna make it better for me. I'm sorry to hear about your brother, but still, though, they don't I'm make shit no better. Right. They ain't gonna make shit no better, though. Fuck making it better. I'm walk around my fucking pistol. Can you grab my phone, brother? I don't, I can't, you know. Man. 
man. You crazy, man, be out here like that. It's love and everything, but I ain't feeling that none of this shit. And I respect y'all, you know what I'm saying, what you're doing and everything. That's cool. But fuck that. I'm not with C's fight. What was y'all letting these motherfuckers can't kick in my door in? What I'm saying is we can't erase what already happened, but the whole thing is you got to look at it like, man. You can't erase what happened. You right. And you can't predict what the fuck I'm finna do. Shit. You know, we just we try just to work try shit out. you options and solutions yeah. to the problem. Man. Fuck this shit. Fuck a problem. Fuck a solution. These motherfuckers trying to take my shit. You ain't just cross me, you cross my fucking mama. But my mama, nigga, I come in your crib and kill that motherfucker body. Tour, your brother's gone. If you be gone, they ain't gonna do nothing but hurt your mama. She'll be all right. How many kids you got? I I'm claiming four. All right, but I'm That's just saying, it. so if you go to jail, who gonna take care of your kids? That's the thing. God taking care of us now. He gonna take care of them. Just like when I do what I'm gonna do, he gonna take care of me too. But you was locked up before for the same shit, though. Man, I've been, I'm 32 years old. I've been locked up 15 years in my life. What that mean? What the fuck that mean? That's where I grew up at. God damn it. Ain't no shame. Ain't no secret. Shit. I'm tired of being out here any motherfucker. Where it's bored as hell, like soft ass niggas out here ain't doing shit but tricking. That ain't the police, is it? What's that on the corner? I know these punk ass police still want me. Motherfuckers gonna have to kill me. Man, that shit crazy, man. How That's can you help me? Right now. How can you help me? I mean, the only thing, like I say, the only thing I could do is try to get to know you more, spend a little time with you, and try to work with so you. So that means you will take me out to dinner then. We can go to lunch right now, and we can sit down and we can talk about this motherfucking problem. That's what you telling me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to hold you to that goddamn shit. Yeah, we could go out. We that's what you want to do. We, we could go out now. Right now? Yeah. Let me go put my pistol up. I don't know. We'll just see. All right. Make sure, though, man, he ain't got shit on him. I'm, I'm good. I ain't got none. It's a rough one. I think that's one of the worst ones I hear. He kept coming and going with us. One minute I think I'm reaching him, he calmed down, then he blow right back up. Anytime you got a person who will stay there and talk with you, you got a chance of working that with him. Uh, Melvin, these, this is the time of the month we go over the conflicts that we turn in once a month. Before the meeting started, T.O. talked to him for a nice little minute. Right off of T.O. was telling him, just come listen. Just check it out. If you don't like it, you can walk out right away. I'm going to shift the agenda to just bring up a hypothetical problem that's taking place somewhere in our town. Let's say somebody tricked on your brother and somebody called the police and said that he had some guns in the house. And the police came and locked your brother up and they found two guns and they put your mother in handcuffs and they know who the guy is that told on your brothers. How would we resolve a conflict like that? If right we gonna keep it 100, that's real, real hard. When you put mama into somebody else's video, that's, that's, that's super duper hard. We're not gonna be able to be effective in all interventions. Okay. There's gonna be something that's gonna slip through the cracks. I let him know that, hey, you get messed up. You had to the burden. So what you gotta do is you gotta put your little personal pride aside and start dealing with this thing on a realistic, responsible way to start trying to figure out a way to get your brother from up under that drama and ease your mother. You wanna be tough to be a hero, gonna be like the rest of our guys who's locked up. I think that's good for now. We got some solid feedback, leave it alone with that. All right, so this is what's happening right now. We got a situation over at Michelle Clark High School. I think when you first started meeting with him, he was on 10. Right. And now I think he's at a, like a level five. The only problem now, Kobe, if he was to see this guy tonight, there's going to be a problem. What's going to happen now, you got to babysit him. You and Howard are going to have to take turns. OK. I know you can tired of me. Wait, let's get out of here, man. Cease fighting for life. Man, about time. Kobe is one of the best violence interrupters, but he knows how to walk away. That's very important because if you don't know how to walk away, you can end up getting hurt. 8424, we've had some close calls. Several violence interrupters have been shot at. Brother Joel, still a lot of pain. This is the first time one of our violence interrupters ever got shot. I came up here to tell you we appreciate you and uh, everything you did to try to mediate that particular conflict. I'm just glad you uh, survived, you know? You stumbled across this coming out your father's house. There was a couple guys down the block arguing over some money. Hmm. As I was approaching them, I had like a, a something like telling me like it wasn't even the right moment to even 
right. interrupt them. I'm just trying to, you know, do my job. One of them said, who are you? You ain't from around here. I said, go talk to his other friend. And then um, and then that's when he shot me up. Yeah, when you turned your back. Yeah, when I turned my back. So you got shot in the ankle and in the, in the back, right? Yeah. Here. They opened my whole stomach open. Yeah, that's tough, my brother. Um, no, because the day you got shot, there were like 16 shootings in six hours. I need you to know all the guys came up here Friday. All the, all the brothers were here. Yeah, we were here, you know, and uh, hmm. I just, it's kind of tough, that's all. I understand. Well, when I thought about you uh, getting shot and your father was there, because I have sons, you know, I got a son like 24, I got another son that's like 28 years old, believe it or not. So when I thought about it, <clears throat> We get good. We be all right, though. You know, we just got to just keep on pushing. Okay. Appreciate you, little brother. All right. Okay. I'm going to get up on out of here. And I'll be back Wednesday. All right. All right. Yep. All right. Yeah. I'm begging you, my sisters, let God do what God needs to do for do. Once we lay this brother down in the ground, we got work to do. Bessie Smith got shot in a retaliation for another student that got shot. But it wasn't Jesse that did the shooting. The family has to heal, and we have work to do. I'm just seeing in the last 10, 15 years, random violence like I've never seen it before last year. Of the 125 homicides where we service those families, about 90% were young people. These children don't expect to live past 30. They come to these funerals and I watch them and they represent and they put themselves in the place of the person in the casket. These young people are in reality saying, this is what I want to happen when, when I'm killed. Affectionately known as Duke. I heard little buzzes in the air that they were coming to shoot the funeral up to get the person that they were intending to get. I called for all hands on deck. Left behind his loving mother, Linnea Smith. The mother got in touch with ceasefire. I've never met this mother before. She said, I need you to be there, Mina. I just would want somebody to do that for my son. <laughs> a lot of y'all might not know me, but I'm Duke's girlfriend. I was his son, he was my sky. <laughs> and I remember one thing before he left out. <laughs> that day, I was talking about everything. I'm gonna get a tattoo of Duke and everything. <laughs> They woke me up out my seat and said, my baby was gone. That's my baby. That's my boy. Rest in peace, baby. I love you. I need everybody from the ages of 13 to 24 to stand up. I'm the second oldest daughter to Jeff Ford. To ones that call Malik chief, and I'm fed up because each and every one of you all can be do right here. I'm gonna be real honest with you all because see, we real talking up in here because Duke is real laying right in front of us, and it's a reason why this brother is here. I see these red caps, my brothers. I know we hurt because we love Duke. But we got a responsibility to bring up our community to be vibrant. Whatever it is that's going on, cease the fire, call a truce.
I was the chauffeur for Dr. Martin Luther King when SCLC made their first venture into the North by way of Chicago. The black community, we were the nobodies, and the civil rights era gave us hope that we could be somebody. How can the president of the United States be a black man? I never thought I'd see that in my lifetime. But while I'm seeing the president on television and the images of him leading the free world, I'm still burying black kids. It just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, I want to get stuck in this snow. Where my man at? Where he at? Where he at? Where Flamo? How you doing, sir? All right, hold on. Okay. What's up? What's up, Flamo? How you feeling today, man? Man, blessed, man bro. you all right? Yeah. I'm Anything blessed. been going for you? Well, you know, I, I can't sell drugs right now, so I got to gamble. Okay. Man, I just lost. You talking the Super, Super Bowl? Bowl? Yeah, man. I'm a sore loser. I'm ready to get my money back, but you know, I ain't come with the game, man. I'm just so happy, man, you calmed down, though, man. And, uh, you've been thinking in another way, and that's that's very good, man. Man, it's, it's hard. I done stopped doing what I'm doing, but shit, don't push me. Right. And you know the good thing? I stopped a little commotion on the block a little while ago. You stopped something today? Yeah. As I'm talking to him, I see they want somebody to intervene and stop him and tell him to go his way and he go his way. You intervened and stopped all that for happening. Yeah. So how do you feel about what you did? Personally, at the time, I just felt like these motherfuckers were making noise and I'm up there watching TV trying to get high. And they made a big ass scene in front of the crib. So shit, I tell them to move on or I'ma get in the fucking both of them. Oh, flame over non-violence, non-violence. Yeah, I'ma be waiting right here on the side, Rodney. Okay? Oh, what's that in your hand? Man, it's a blunt, man. I ain't hey, man, but flame old man, they ain't tell no rat like that. You know, I don't rat with no blunts and shit in here, man. That's no, man. That's why I ain't tell you, see? But I'm saying I'm you should have enough this. respect for me. Don't I do know. that, though. Oh. Police pull up. Everybody in here can go, go to jail. jail. Let me get rid of the evidence. Hell, yeah, man. That ain't cool at all. I wasn't thinking. You weren't thinking? That's why I'm trying to get into the mode of doing what's right, man. I know I, I got a little screws missing on the attitude side. I used to want to get in tune with the gang bangs and gunslingers. Like, wasn't none of that worth it. Because out of all the stuff I had to do and done back then, I ain't got nothing to show for it. None that I done negative. My friends in jail, my friends, drug addicts or whatever. It seems like you know how life repeats itself as a cycle. You just be one of the persons that's telling the story. I'm trying to be one of the ones telling the story. I don't want to be the one that's living a lifestyle on these streets, struggling and, you know, got to keep harm and doing wrong and all the other nonsense. Man, I'ma holler at you, bro. I ain't seen this you, brother. See this you. Today I brought this young man home from prison. He been gone for like two or three years for an armed robbery. I've been knowing him and his family for a long time. And the only thing he kept saying, he wanted to see his little brother and his two sisters. changes. Mm-hmm. You know, two years, two and, and a half months. years. Yeah. Before you went to jail, I really, like, noticed you as Lil Mikey, but now you're not Lil Mikey no more. Hated it, but I ain't got to do that no more. I missed your graduation. I ain't going to miss yours, and I definitely ain't going to miss yours. Okay. 
What about that role model paper mama was telling me about? It's about you and me, about how I miss you. I hope you get to see one sometimes. Right. But this the old Mikey that you said was your role model, right? Mm hmm I don't want him to be your role model because he was a different person than he was at home than he was on the block. So hopefully this Mikey will be your role model. Mm hmm Your daddy um your daddy will be coming home soon, won't he? 2013. 2013. How long your daddy been gone? 17 years. I'm here for you. I'm here for y'all now. So. It's real tough for people to get out of prison, man. And a lot of times when you get out of prison, when you can't find no job, you get discouraged and like, man, it's hard out here, man. Should I go back to doing the shit I used to do? He sent me a test message. He got a new phone yeah, number. When he got out, yeah. he tried really hard until he found his job. Uh-huh. Where your boy at, Stephon? Even when they laid him off, That's he good, was very active. I would be like, why are you going out there? You're oh, not getting good, paid. It's like, because. <laughs> Eventually, they'll get some funding. I have to go, though. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And he's stuck with it, and he's back. students at Namaste, putting up their artwork that we worked on this past couple of months. You're like, damn, by the time shows up, right? <laughs> How you been? Good. Good. How about by the neighborhood? Kid got shot. Paralyzed from the waist down. Did you know him? Yeah. He lived downstairs from us. Really? Oh my gosh. If anything like that happens, guys, now you know you can get in touch with Eddie. Especially if you just want to talk, you know. You guys can tell me these things too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? No? Eddie's a little bit more equipped to deal with it. Because I got a cousin I'm afraid of. Because his mom's in the hospital and he started drinking and smoking. And he wears a lot of uh, bad colors. So, yeah, I just want to talk to you about that. I think he's like going to get shot or get killed because of all the bad stuff that happened to my cousin. I know he has a gun, and, like, in his bedroom, like, um, I don't know, I was like, I'm really afraid for him because, because, like, I don't know, he, he might, like, like, um, I don't know. You know, I mean, your cousin probably right now feels kind of hopeless. He feels probably like he's alone. Why not do these things, you know? Nobody cares if I get locked up. Nobody cares if I get shot. I think he still can change. Like how, I know, like how you told us about how you were in a gang and stuff and how you changed. But you know, also it, it takes time. It took time for me. It took a long time for me. And tell me like where he's at. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go to his house and I'll talk to him. I mean, I, I wish your cousin was here just to listen to what you're saying. Cause I'm sure he'll probably be touched and moved by how you feel about it and how concerned you are about him. And them guys would love to have you, you know, in their circle. When they see you doing right, they see you doing good, it's like they look at that and they envy that because they wish they were in their shoes. And if these guys keep messing with you, man, just call me, bro. Call me. Mm. All right? Yeah. All right, cool, bro. All right, man. Wait, why are we waiting for you for the complete oh. set? That looks great. So who's doing the end? Hanging them up now? Fit sort of in there. And be careful not to poke a hole through the canvas. 
Drake created. So, so. Thank you. yes. What do you think? Right here. Line it up. The words that I painted are the words that they themselves came up with. Wounded, dragged down, painful, lonely, shattered, destroyed. That expressed what Suffering, they felt about heads. violence. Revived, repaired, recovering, fixing, curing. And about Hoping, moving forward. Rejoice, hope. What I see through these paintings, that they actually have a lot of hope for the future. The same thing that we've done in Iraq, we could do this right here in our own backyard. Politicians say Chicago's a war zone, and they want the military to fight back. Some lawmakers want Governor Quinn to deploy the National Guard to Chicago's most dangerous neighborhoods. And my conversations with the National Guard was, is it possible for you to come in and assist the Chicago Police Department? The mandate is said, shoot to kill back in six days. You endanger the lives of all of us. It comes to me to talk about gangs, guns, and drugs. But there's no type of job contracting opportunity. We got to defend our own people. We got to solve our own problems. He have ceasefire and our models to stop the violence. In, a, in an essence, that just a band-aid to this big issue that's going around us. Every single day, man, they ask me for jobs. They're like, I'm stuck right now, man. Like, I don't even know what to do. Like, I'm feeling the pressures from everywhere. I'm pretty much going to be homeless. All these things lead to violence. Reducing uh, the violence is not a band-aid. It's actually the essential pathway to a neighborhood being able to develop, for the schools to be able to get better, for the kids to get rid of their stress disorders, for businesses to feel safe enough and well enough to be able to come into these neighborhoods. We don't have enough resources to go around, so the doc really just wants to change the conversation around violence. Let me finish, all right? If you can't feed these young guys, they're not going to listen to you. Bottom line. Look. The African-American community and the Latino community have been beaten down so long with poor schools, lack of jobs, hopelessness, despair. A lot of people can't stick with peace if they don't have a, a stick that they can hold on to. Break the window, that's on you. Break it, break it, you gonna go to jail. You really get fucked up. I'm not worried, I'm not worried. Ain't nobody put no fear in my heart. Step out the building in. Get the fuck away from my window. I don't give a fuck who interviewing you, bitch. Come step you ain't got no life. Step outside, bitch. You can put that in my face. I'm going to tell you that like it is. This she is for real. This is an everyday dude. This, is, this is what they do. She want to be one of us, a man. This is what they do every day, all day. And me being at this site and being the only female, it's not working. It's not working. Okay, this is what happened at the site. He called me a bitch and I spit on him and he came to my window and spit on me. They didn't put their hands on you, did they? They, 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 they want to fight me. They, they, they trying to fight me when, when I come back to the site. But I think I'm going to just go. I'm going to call the house right now. Mr. Lee. Yes, sir. I'm up in touch you. You promise me? It's no, man. If she continue to go about this the wrong way, Sam, she is not going to look good and she's going to get ugly. Well, let me go ahead and call my little people from the Greens and, you know, we could go ahead and do this because I'm not wary. He, he not finna scare me. Hey, no, I'm finna hang up because I'm finna hang up this phone. I'm finna hang up. I'm not, I'm not, you, I'm not, they know I'm going to actually fight them without no problem. But why? Why? You going to risk busting, getting all of that scratched and all that? Why? You too pretty for that. My baby, you gotta be tired. You gotta be tired of that fighting. Do they 18 and 19, but you I can't ain't. Spit on nobody. <laughs> that can start a war. Yeah, that's you don't I'm know that. Do you her. know that? Yes, yeah, I'm be telling people I know you. You can't be spitting on nobody though. So what? Mm -hmm. Knowing me or not, them knowing that you know me, they don't. It's your actions. You understand what I'm saying? For real, mommy, do you for real? Capricia's been through hell and back. 
It's tough. Capricious. Trying to process emotions about not having a mom and dad around. I have a vision in my head of my dad on this white horse riding through 79th Street coming back for me. Me getting shot in the game was God telling me, you got to make your own choices. My family knew exactly who did it. And I got a phone call from my dad while I was in the hospital, telling me how sorry he was. He apologized. It's going to be some answers for it. And why? Why, Dad? Leave that boy alone. That was the last encounter that I had with the game. And as I look back, that was my first mediation. How's that thing been going with your job search and everything else? It's, it's been hard. I ain't found no job yet. But I ain't gonna give up. I've been working with Lil Mikey for a while. Even while he was in prison, he kept stressing he wanted to apologize to them people we robbed at the barbershop. It was a war thing, but so we did it to get more guns. We don't know how this might turn out. We going to talk to them. If they accept it or not, it's still like, I know I made a mistake, and I'm asking for y'all forgiveness. Kind of nervous going here? I think I'm going to start feeling it when I get in the shop. How y'all doing? I understand that on August 24th, 2007, that me and two other fellas came in here and stuck the place up. I know I'm deeply, I'm deeply sorry. I know I made a mistake. I was 15 and I was following the crowd, but now I'm older. I'm much more mature than I was, and I wanted to let y'all know that I was sorry for what I did on my behalf. I don't know how these two other brothers feel about themselves, but I know I made a complete 360 my, uh, during my, uh, almost three years being incarcerated. Well, with me, my, my daughter was in here and my baby, and you just don't know the impact that you put on my life, holding us with guns. I'm nervous right now even meeting you, and I thank God that you have changed your life, but you just don't know what they have did to me and my kids. I deal with this every day, every day of my life, every day. You came in here, you asked for a haircut. You left back out. You came back in and you did this to my kids. And Jeremy held my baby with a gun up to his head and then filthed on my daughter with a gun. And then you told my coworker Rhonda that you were gonna kill her because she was calling the police. My life was in your hands. I didn't know if you was going to kill me. My daughter kept saying, Mama, we going to die. And I hold my babies. And when you want to tell your kids, when you want to protect your kids, and you can't at that moment, y'all put up seven people in the little bathroom. We didn't even know what was going to happen to us. And right now to this day, he never talk about that robbery. That was three years ago and he just made 13. He ain't never said nothing. I don't know what's on his mind, but I just pray and ask God to don't let him hold that in. But I'm just glad that you a changed man. You look better, but you know what? I, I'm, I'm okay, I'm a better person now. And I hope that you know you, you be a better man. That's all I'm saying. But I hope that you are sincere. And that this, this man right here, I mean, he helping you and he making you a better man. You could have been dead and gone, but God spared your life. This the father right here? Yeah. I would like to see him hug him, because you don't owe him nothing, but you teaching him. And imagine what he thinking about. So it take a lot of gut to walk back on the surfaces that you did dirt on. So many cats we shake hands with, and they the same guys that broke in our house, we just don't know it. Same ones raped our sisters, our mothers, our daughters. And we know these young guys today at his age, they don't come back. The fact that today you release something in somebody and in yourself, you got to run with that. All right? Yes, sir. 
It was hard, real hard. Like to just relive what she went through just in her, I mean, in my eyes, but she went through it. When you first stepped in, did you remember them? Mm-mm. You didn't remember them? Not at all. Kennedy, 825. All right. Today, 16 years ago. So nice. I took someone's life, pretty much. And so. Hello, hi. I'm Eddie. You know, on this day, in honor of the victim of my case, I try to do as many good deeds as I can. I try to reach out to, especially strangers. I've thought of hopefully one day going to my victim's family and really just expressing to them how deeply sorry I am. And whether or not they'll accept my apology, which I don't think they will, I really just want to do this. It's just that right now, I don't think it's still right. The last stop of today, we're going to the cemetery to visit the family of Miguel, the kid who was shot and killed a few weeks ago. Hello, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? You know, right? I spoke to Vanessa, little, his sister, about of some of the issues that are going in, in her home right now. Eddie. Now, I, I never got to meet him, you know, to be honest, but I know he was a good kid. I actually brought a, a flower, too, that I wanted to drop off, so. You mind putting some of Miguel got shot in the head. Vanessa was actually there when this happened. He pretty much died in her arms. I think that Vanessa does feel that what happened to her brother was her fault. But she can't blame herself because somebody else was ignorant, had a gun, and shot her brother. ¿Qué más le gustaba hacer a él? ¿También le gustaba mucho entonces? Sí, le gustaba mucho estar dibujando y me decía, y si pinto la pared en tu casa, le decía, ay, Miguel Ángel, no, no puedes hacer eso. Sí. ¿Y vienen cada, casi cada semana aquí? Todos los días. Todos los días. Man, that lady goes in there every single day. That's fucked up, man. So to me, on this day, same day that the victim in my case died, this is it, man. This is, this is the end result. You took a life, now you're paying with your life. It's like, you dumbass. He finally didn't go, go get locked away. I was like in my mom. I was like, no, this isn't happening. My parents were devastated. I mean, my mom, she needed to sell the house here that we had in Chicago to pay for the lawyer fees. And it was like a 180. You know, my dad was already an alcoholic. He would get drunk. And I, he'd express, you know, his, his, his sorrow. Y ojalá que todo se le dé, que pueda seguir realizar su vida como cualquier otra persona normal. Porque ya no había Santa Claus y para que si había Santa Claus, iba a tener que darle una moto. Una persona que trata de luchar y, y vivir como, como se debe vivir dignamente. Little Mikey, he showed some of the initiative on getting his own job, his first real job. If you don't get that grass up first, what's it gonna do is come right through this paper. 
So there's, a, there's only one way to do this, is, is to do it the right way so we don't have to redo it, okay? Okay? We got an understanding. Okay, thank you. Don't come up. She the boss. Being on the block, you ain't gotta do this to make money. Being with my guys all day, doing what I wanna do when I wanna do it, and how I wanna do it. But as long as I'm keeping busy, I'm gonna be good. And as you can tell, this is keeping me busy. <laughs> This is tired. Well, I can't complain. Life good right now for me. I got a job. <laughs> I got a job. All I used to hear, you a class X fella. Can't do nothing. We're doing something. text me or they try to tell me, oh, we just want to know what's the truth, like what really happened to your brother. And they're just trying to seem like they care, but they don't. The way we kind of spoke about it, like Vanessa like, would catch them off guard. You would say something like, I know you're asking because you really care about me, which they don't. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm and then welcome. That's good. That's a good one. And that way, if any of them get in your face about anything, then you just call Eddie. <laughs> She's even doing things like in his honor, like the art group, right? Mm -hmm. What did he always want to paint? He wanted to paint the Virgin Mary, but he never got the chance to do it. You know? Well, you could do it for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, I dreamt that my mom went to pick me up at school with my little sister, and then my brother came from the door. And he ran to me, he gave me a, a big hug. He told me, I'm not dead, I'm still here with you. You think he's with you right now? Yeah. I think so too. It gets better, maybe. For some reason, time kind of heals things. You know? So what else are we doing to make you beautiful today? I don't know. I'm just going with the flow. I start school tomorrow. Excellent. <sighs> and this year's goal is what? To graduate. I got you. To get my high school diploma. She was saying that tomorrow's the first day of school and I'm so excited. And I was excited for her. She's going with a fresh hairdo. I went today and found out school started three weeks ago. I did go to school. You went to school when you got the fuck ready to. You didn't Ooh. go up there when it was time for them to go Actually, in. Actually, yes, I did miss me. You don't know that. You, you, you don't know that. Capricia, your counselor yeah. said you got there when you got no. there. And I got there at 8.55 before everybody. Capricia. Right. You didn't fight hard enough for you to no. get up in that school and do what you need I ain't, to do. I ain't got to say nothing. Capricia, Capricia don't nobody have to Capricia. kiss your ass for you to do what you need to do for you. And I'm still gonna be the same person at the end of the day. At the end of the day, doing what? 
Get my life together takes time. Time for what? You did two years out of your life. Wasn't that enough time for you to get your life together? What you do is you manipulate, you do this and you do that, and then you so ashamed and afraid that when I ask you to be honest with me, you can't. Do you want to be loved? Absolutely. Do you deserve to be loved? No. Nope. Absolutely. Nope. First thing, you got to love you. Oh, I love myself. Capricia? Capricia. When I stopped allowing the circumstances to dictate my life, when I let that fuck everybody go, then I got real honest with my feelings. I'm scared. I'm hurting. It's okay, though. Well, I'm not like you to open up so easy. Sorry. I don't open up so easy. I don't open up so easy. I open up as needed for me because I want to get better and continue to stay healthy. Why you choose not to? Because I like my life how it is now. You like your life doing what? Shit. All right. Well, I can't aid in the bed shit. I flush shit. You think everything bullshit. You know what? You, you just thinking, said it. You can keep thinking everything bullshit, though, real talk. You know, I remember being 19 and being a scared girl like that. You know, me being out there and doing a lot of things that I did, I thought that I really was getting back at the person that I thought that should come and get me. And tell me, you ain't got to live like that. Man, if I can go back and then make that pain go away for me today, if I could do that, I would do it in a heartbeat. And that's so, so painful for me, for her. Because she's going to be my age someday. And it's going to be a whole bunch of regrets. I don't even know why I'm doing this. <laughs> I must be glutton for punishment. The sucker, um, it, is it a sucker up there? Now, sitting here talking to you, there was 15 times that I just wanted to get up and walk away from you. But I didn't and I couldn't. I'm going to be added on to the people that fucked her around. And you telling me. I'm not going to call her what's again. Going on with you? You know, I'm going to be available for her at my availability. I told your mama last week she was happy too. Say, kid of God told me he loved me. She was happy. Yeah, I was happy, but I was worried, too. When you call and tell me you love me, I get worried, but I feel good at the same time to hear it. So I should have called. No, you should. Because it makes me know that y'all were thinking about me just as much as I'm thinking about y'all. Kobe made a difference in their life by being with them one-on-one, -on -one, because they never really had a male man, role model. But it's all good, man. Just stay focused, though. And I'm here when you need me. Hey, I call her. I call her. I call my mama every day. Not every day. Almost At least every day. It's three every day times to me. out of the week. It's every day to me. <laughs> you need a haircut. Come get dressed. Lord. What kind of influence has Kobe been in your life? Kobe's been bad and good influences in my life. Yeah. You know, we want you to become a professional young brother. I'm not close-minded to the fact that uh, if we can get a younger brother in, I'm open-minded to that. And I know we ain't never had no young people like that. I mean, 18. 18. Right. You can really be a crusader for peace now, you know? Right. For those who want to listen. So, who's all that down there? My sister, me, my mom, and my dad. That's your brother on top? Mm-hmm. 
Can you put it up in your room? No, his room. Her grade's declining. And I just wondered, like, if it has to do with her brother. She got into a fight, and she was suspended. This person made a comment. Well, she was already enraged, and that was probably her boiling point. That was it. And one day, you might have all the strength you think you have. And you think, you know what? I could go continue on with my life. You guys are going to the cemetery still? Mm-hmm. How often do you guys go now? Mm, like, try to go like three days a week. But then the next day, their emotions are triggered by something. They kind of push them back to square one. So I don't think people ever get over it. after she walked off. She was locked up. She violated her parole, not going to school, staying away from the home, as well as dropping dirty. This is my mother, Miss Amina. <laughs> and these are all the girls that said fabulous. Females. Hey, Divas, how are you? What is the guard? And it's not guard, it's security staff. Oh, OK. This is our principal. How are you? I'm Amina. Hi, Sandy. She's pushed me to do school so I can graduate. You can graduate. Um, you know, that's, that was our goal. So you may get your party after all. Yeah, I get a party. Yeah, I didn't think that she wasn't gonna all. come, but when I said that, when I seen her at the door, I was happy to see her. And I felt that I don't know. She wasn't in the play today. She got kicked out because of her behavior. A chance to make a mess, a chance to be someone. Please give me what I need the most. Chance to when she gets out, what awaits Capricia is her. It's going to be a rough throw. The hand that life dealt her. Me too. They were all twos in it. She just has to learn how to play those twos as if it was a Boston. Oh, look at my man. Oh, look, look at my main man. Flame old last time I saw you, you ain't had no uniform on, you had other things on your man. Look at you, man. You got your whole how you, doing? how you feel, oh, man? But she, you look like you're doing great. Starting to do stuff positive and seeing how it worked. And I ain't been in jail, I ain't been arguing and fighting, I ain't been having to shoot nobody. Man, I'm just so happy for you. I promise you, boy, I'm so happy for you, man. I hope you do feel good about yourself, cause to keep it real with you, man, I had like three, four people lined up. And I was really plotting on how to get them, but you was just in my ear. You know what I'm saying? You constantly in my ear. You bugging me for a minute. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a fucking You know how they be like, right. I'm sleeping, the fly keep landing on you. You know what I'm saying? You was bugging me to eventually I had to get up and attend to that fly. I'm gonna get up with you. If I fall short, if I don't make the grade, if your expectations aren't met in me today, there's always tomorrow or tomorrow night. Baby, sooner or later, I know I'll get it right. Please don't give up on me. Oh, please don't give up on me. I know it's late, late in the game. But my 
my true feelings haven't changed here in my heart. Don't give up on me. 